Hey, Don here. Okay, well, I'm back on the 76 Blazer, checking the uh, motor ID number. And uh, this is something I learned back in the 70s. Okay, that, that's really shiny there, isn't it? But that shiny plate is where the motor ID number is on the 70s. I know all the 70s. Most of the 70s, uh, 350s and big blocks. And you can look it up in the motor manual and find out exactly what block you got. Of course, that doesn't tell you if somebody changed the heads, but it gives you a good idea. Because I was getting ready to get gasket set and uh, I wanted to see if I could see that motor number. But I can't find even a telltale sign of a motor number. What if that'll sit there? Oh, look at that. I can make it see the whole thing. I thought maybe the video would even help me see it. And it actually does. I'm going to stand up. When you can't see them, a lot of times they're just not showing up good enough. You can take a pencil. This is a carpenter's pencil. Rub it over it. Light thing. And it'll, uh, of course, if you can get to it, if the alternator was off, and I could get to it, I could do it real easy. I used to always keep my motor numbers written down back in those days. It took forever to get the grease off of it. She's some carburetor cleaner and a screwdriver with a paper towel on it. And finally, I thought, like, you know what? I got some denatured alcohol that cleans junk pretty good. Let's see if that'll work. It didn't. Uh, it did clean it better. <laughs> I should have started with that. It kind of started melting the grease way better than. I guess the uh, carburetor cleaner doesn't melt grease. Maybe it just for trying to break down all that old gas stuff and all that. It did seem to kind of turn it into powder or something. I did think I saw the telltale signs of a three earlier and I couldn't get some of the grease off down at the bottom and I used a screwdriver to scrape on it. And so that made scrape marks all across the top of it. And so I've been rubbing on it and trying to kind of, you can probably just see all those scrape marks. See if I can get some light in there in a different way. But you can't really, I can't really see a sign of a number. Now that's a better spot for the light if I could reach in there with it like that. I don't even, I didn't even bring my magnifying glass, but at that distance I probably need the magnifying glass closer. Sometimes maybe chalk will work. I used to put chalk on my Marlock balancer when I was going to time my vehicle with a timing line. But I get to where I just time these, time them by year, always have, since the 70s. This one's got a little, what they call an RV cam, a 195 lift cam. And I don't think the time light works. I've tried it a few years ago again, and it's like it wasn't lining up with what you're supposed to see. And I thought, you know what, I don't think it works with one of those higher lift cam. I mean, you can figure it out. I think that, I don't remember exactly. I think you have to figure out what, where the... The mark's not going to be in the standard place. It's not going to work right. you got to figure out the different degrees, I think. Like, according to your cam. That's what I'm thinking. Not sure. Don't remember, really. But since I've done, since I've done it by ear all these years, it just wasn't an issue for me anyway. You know, an old carbureted engine that's not like this. You'll inject a computerized things. Just advance it till it misses and then back off a little bit until it runs smooth again. And if it's if it doesn't want to start good when you warm it up, then you back it off a little more. And that'll give you the most get up and go you can get. At least that's how of being a real professional racer. I'm sure there's better ways, but I cannot see a sign of a number. Move the light like that, and can't see nothing down there. Wish I had some like fluorescent paint or something I could put on there. I don't not necessarily fluorescent, but that stuff that glows in the, you know, you, it glows when light absorbs light. That's what I mean. That kind of stuff. It is fluorescent, isn't it? Now let me try something that. 
some marking off of there. And uh, that denatured alcohol doesn't evaporate quite as fast, too. I can still tell it's pretty wet. Right, so. I might try chalk <coughs> or metal. I have some metal markers up there. And the garage. I don't know that they would work. I've done them. I've done that before with them. I don't know if they'll work on this. Yeah, the light's stopping me from being able to move my arm. I got it hooked. Down there on the end, that, that's one stubborn spot. I knew there wasn't going to be no numbers down there, but I wanted to see it to make darn sure because they're kind of hand stamped numbers. They could put them anywhere on there they wanted. We used to, when I worked in the aircraft factory building F 16s, we had to uh, vibro engrave part numbers by hand on the bulkheads and stuff. And we had a certain area within a few inches where they needed to be, but you know. We wouldn't be in exactly the same place every time. So, I know how that goes. Paste it. Boy, it hooks good on that heater hose. And my door deal keeps opening up. Let me go get some of that chalk. That's the only other idea I've got. I don't think there's a number on it. Look down there with my actual eyes. I mean, nothing that can be seen. I see that telltale bit of maybe a three or something. You probably can't see it at all. It's dark as pitch now, it looks like. I don't know, it could focus. Let's see. Yeah, now that's probably better for the phone. 